The Leeds International Piano Competition, known as the Leeds, is one of the world's most prestigious keyboard events. This year's instalment sees a new partnership with artistic management agency Askenus Holt. I'm joined by Gaton Le Develek, director of Askenas Holt, and Adam Gatehouse, co-artistic director of the Leeds. Adam, what new developments can we expect? Well. And the Leeds has always, as you say, had had a, a, a place in the top pantheon of, of, of competitions. Um, what we felt was lacking was a way of reaching out to the world. Um, we used to bring the world to Leeds, um, which is a wonderful town in the north of England, but we felt that the Leeds needed to reach out to the world. So we took the first round back in April out to Berlin, Singapore and New York those being the three centres from which we draw our competitors. And there we had 68, uh, 68 pianists and we whittled those down to 24 who will come to Leeds in September. Also, we are for the first time streaming the whole competition online um, with, through Medici TV. Um, and through them, we will be able to reach an audience of millions, probably you know, more a greater audience in this one competition than we've achieved in, in, in the 55 years of the, of the competition's history. And then crucially, I think, we have um, developed, I think, a prize package, which is uh, very, very valuable, both, but particularly valuable to, to the competitors. Um, partnerships with organisations like the Wigmore Hall, South Bank, the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, the Oslo Philharmonic, getting some, some, some important dates. Um, a, a partnership with Warner Classics, which gives them a, a, a CD. Um, and then really crucially is this, is this partnership we, we're, we're developing with, with Ask and Ask Holt, um, which will ensure artist management for one of the winners, I stress one of the winners, and, and I'm sure Guitar will explain the ra reasoning behind that. I mean, it's really important that um, this prize package is, is designed with the pianist's long-term career in mind, isn't it? And, and what is it that your artistic management package will, will do to facilitate that? We've always taken a, 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 an artist-centred approach, so, so it will very much depend on the individual. Uh, as Adam pointed out earlier, there is a, a, a wide range of, of, uh, of age uh, in, among the finalists. So obviously the approach if you're dealing with a, with a 19 year old would be completely different to the approach if you're dealing with, with, with a 29 year old. Uh, but we expect that a lot of it would be uh, about that there would be an aspect of it which would be a pastoral role uh, and ad ad advising on uh, on uh, career strategy, advising on repertoire, uh, and uh, but of course uh, we also have uh, in here in in this agency, uh, in a way uh, there is a uh, the, the the amount of information which transits through uh, through our office is huge and that gives us a, a real opportunity to uh, place an artist in the, in, in the right uh, places at the, at the right time and, and th there are a lot of opportunities that we'll be able to offer within, within the, the two years of, of, um, of them winning the, uh, the competition. And Paul Lewis has spoken before about the importance of not taking on too many engagements within the first year and how it's very tempting for a competition prize winner to to ru almost run before they can walk yep. is that something that you will you will do to help, help yep. nurture your, your uh, uh, absolutely this is this is perhaps one, one of the most important things for for anyone who manages an artist who's just won an international competition is actually to uh, it's it it'll be it'll be Mainly uh, about s slowing things down rather than speeding things up. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the from an from an artist manager's point of view, what a uh, uh, what a competition of of Leeds caliber brings to the equation is a momentum, and uh, it is very tempting to uh, 
you, 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 you could take a very short-term approach and and and, uh, uh, and, and go and, and go too fast. Um, and the, I think we, we, we all need to remember that the, the, the pianists, uh, any pianist who wins a, a competition of this caliber, uh, how, however uh, uh, good they are as instrumentalists, they're still at a stage where there is a lot they need to do in order to develop. And the danger is that they, they, they get exposed too much too soon. Um, and uh, the you know, a, a lot of people are going to hear them in in those two years immediately following the competition, and a lot of people are going to form an opinion that includes uh, concert presenters, it, it, it includes orchestra managers, and it, it is really important that they form the right opinion at that point because if if they don't then you're looking at years before that can be turned around so it'll be a question it, it's a question of pacing the the engagements but also making sure that uh, the, um, the 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 uh, the 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 winner the winners play the right repertoire, repertoire that they're really ready to present to the to, to the audience, and and where they know they can bring something strong and uh, and unique, uh, and that's going to make people who hear them feel that they have they're an artist that is um, is is ready to go basically. I think just picking up on what you said that that repertoire is very very important, and also let's not forget that the the age difference between the youngest and the oldest contestant coming to Leeds is, is nearly 10 years, which is quite mm. a, lot, a long yeah. time in a young artist's career. The youngest is 20 and the oldest is 29. And so <clears throat> the 29-year-olds will inevitably have that much more experience of mm. learning repertoire and performing it and working with, uh, with other orchestras and things like that. Um, I think it's very interesting that when we asked Murray Perrin what it was like after he won the Leeds in 1972, he said it was quite traumatic because he didn't have enough repertoire. And he had to take six months off to learn repertoire and cancel all the engagements <laughs> that they had lined up for him um, just to learn repertoire. And I think that this thing of repertoire is very important. And with that in mind, we have raise the stakes a little bit for the contestants in that, for instance, we, they have to present two completely different programmes for the semi-finals and they have to come prepared to play two completely different programmes of 75 minutes music, which includes chamber music, and we will choose that the night before one of them has to actually go on to do, to, to do that. So they, they have to have quite a lot of repertoire. The same with concertos. They will have to have two concertos ready to play and we will select which one it is because I think that the danger of anybody who is catapulted, if you like, through winning a major competition into the world stage is that they simply are not equipped with enough repertoire to cope with it. You know, mm. you can't, you can't, I'm sure Guitar will agree, you can't do that on one or two concert programs and two concertos. Yeah. It's the amount of repertoire and it's the ability to, to build a program too. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To, and one of the things that gave us faith that, that the, uh, the Leeds competition was uh, a uh, a, a, a competition that we'd like to establish a partnership with was the, the, the sort of thinking that that went into all this, uh, and uh, y y you um, you feel that that they are uh, they have thought about uh, all the aspects of what makes a successful concert pianist, not just uh, not not just the instrumental part, but also the. the uh, the, the, the repertoire, how to how to build a program, uh, the, the the chamber music side of things, and and these are all crucial aspects of, of building building a career. Both of those aspects, the the chamber music and and the the breadth of repertoire, that's very unusual in a piano competition. Well, I think where we are maybe slightly different from some of the others is that we do make 
some quite strong stipulations, particularly when it comes to what, again, going back to Mario Perra, what he called the core classical repertoire, which is what he said attracted him to the leads. And so for both the, the preliminary rounds and the first round, um, they have to perform a work pre-1800 or pre-1820. In the concerto round, they have to have a concerto which goes from Bach to Mendelssohn with via Mozart, mm. Beethoven and Haydn, as well as Rachmaninoff, Schumann or Chopin or Prokofiev. Prokofiev. Um, so they need to be able to, 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 to do both. And I think that is crucial. The other, the other crucial thing that Gitar touched on is the program building and each of the contestants comes to the semi, who gets through to the semi-finals, has to present the jury with a 500 word uh, expose of why they have chosen that program. And that will be taken into account. And one slightly unusual thing about this, this prize package that you're offering, the artistic mm. management, is it's not automatically going to be the, the first prize <laughs> winner, <Yeah>. is it? <laughs> um, which is curious. Could you tell us about your reasons yes. for that? Yes. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, actually quite, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. I mean, the, the, a successful, um, the, the successful representation of an artist rests, uh, you know, on obviously a talented artist and, and a good management, but a good a good chemistry between the two. So 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 to be bound to representing an artist uh, without knowing anything about who they are or you know, it, it, it is not something that would uh, uh, that would make sense from 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 our perspective. There can be also uh, some very practical reasons why. It isn't actually possible for us to take on the winner. They may already have representation, for example. Uh, so, so, so I, that that it, it was kind of a pragmatic uh, decision. Uh, the um, we we the the way the competition has been designed uh, gives us every reason to think that we will we will we will agree with the jury of the competition that that the winner is is the one that we should also represent but for the sake of uh, of um, it you know, it is pragmatic really it's it's just it's just uh, to have a, that flexibility is 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 uh, is, a, is an important Am I right in thinking that the, the jury doesn't just comprise pianists, does it? Which is no, quite you're right. Mm. Um, we wanted the jury to be one which was international performer-led. So there are five international pianists on the jury. Paul Lewis, Imogen Cooper, Lars Vogt, Shai Wozner and Sa Chen. But then we also, we also wanted a composer. And Thomas Lacher, um, who is a fantastic composer, but also a really wonderful pianist. He used to play with the Ensemble Intercontemporain and, and a fantastic pianist. Um, we also wanted a chamber musician and uh, somebody who would bring a, a, a different perspective. And really pleased that Henning Kragerut is on that because he's kind of 
wild card. You know, anybody who's ever met Henning knows that, that, that nothing is quite straightforward with him and his music making is, is always really, really interesting and, and he's collaborated with all sorts of people and particularly given the accent that we are placing on chamber music, I think that's really important. And then there's myself and Gillian Moore um, as, as, as concert promoter. And it's not a huge jury. Some juries are 12, 14, 15. We don't, uh, I, I don't see the, the, the value in that. Um, I think that a, a, a good, goodly number is nine. Nine is a goodly number. Another thing that I have, have not mentioned and that I should is that we're offering both the competitors but also the audiences a much broader experience um, at the Leeds this time. The competition element takes place in the afternoon and evening, but in the mornings um, there are going to be master classes, there are exhibitions, there's discussions, there's talks, um, and um, all sorts of things like that. And crucially, all the 24 who come to Leeds will stay at the competition right through to the end. Usually, once um, people have been knocked out, they have to clear their room by 11 o'clock the next day and you know, they leave their tail between their legs, their, their, their confidence in tatters and try and find the cheapest ticket home. You know? <laughs> but we will keep them there and we will give them opportunities. We're going to have um, the master classes, they all figure in master classes, but also um, we're having a, a piano trail, 12 pianos across Leeds, in public places of, of Leeds. And we're organising little pop-up performances on those, and so they will have a chance to, 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 to perform at some of those. We've, um, we've got a, 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 a large industrial container, which we're going to also hold little mini recitals in. Um, so so there's, there's, there's lots going on, and, and hopefully those who are eliminated after the second round will feel that they're still hugely valued mm. because of what we can offer them this is, this is one of the things that we found incredibly appealing about the way the composition was designed because, because I've always felt, uh, from my perspective as a manager, that uh, a, 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 a competition should be of value to all the candidates and not just the winners. Uh, and, and, and I think there is a, a clear situation in, in Leeds where that's going to be the case. And if I may just add to that, because for us, uh, the fact that we are partnering with Ask and Ask Holt is also hugely valued because I, I've known Ask and Ask Holt for the best part of 30 years um, and have worked with them in various capacities and have always known them to be an agency that really does take the artist's long-term career to its heart. And I've seen so many wonderful artists. I mean, Ian Bostridge is, is one, but you know, going back further, Felicity Lott, <laughs> Thomas Allen, you know, people like that, whose careers started when they were virtually unknown mm. here at, at, at Askenas, and who have, in the best possible way, been allowed to build their careers to their best possible advantage. And so that, for us, is very, very important. You mentioned the difference in age, so mm. you're, the person you could be representing might be 19 or through to 29. Actually, can I correct? 20. 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 sorry, 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 20 to 29. Yeah. So it's very likely that some of, one of them might still be at the conservatoire. Yes, indeed. Still studying. Yeah. So how would, does that work? Would you, would you work with their tutors? How would you, well, that, that, that really depends that? on again. It depends on the individual. Uh, it depends on the individual artist. It depends on on their on on their professor. Uh, uh, there are some artists who are still studying who are uh, who are very independent from their professors. Uh, there are others who uh, who will want to discuss everything with their professors. Um, you have situations where a professor is uh, keen to engage with the management and others where they they can feel well you know that's not really my job i'm you know i'm just here to t i'm just here to teach and so so it's it's a case it's a case by case but i mean the, what what it would mean if if we are if we if we are looking at an artist who 
is still studying is that uh, that obviously has a direct impact on the, 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 the number of engagements that they're able to take on on an annual basis. We would need to have a, a very uh, candid discussion with the artists about what's the comfortable uh, number of engagements that they can take without it impacting on their, on their st studies and their continued development. Just to pick up on what you said about us and their teens, we have actually raised the lower age limit to 20. There was no lower age limit and, and <coughs> some artists came at 15 to the Leeds. I mean, Igor Levitt went in for it when he was 15. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Sun yeah. Kim was 18. Yes. yes. Um, we felt, Paul and I felt very strongly that um, particularly because of those sorts of conflicting things and the fact that at that age they certainly just don't have the repertoire or the maturity mm. or or the stamina or the stamina yeah, yeah. Uh, or the experience to, to to really really start and embark on a, on a, on the sort of career that winning the leads and the and that the exposure of winning the leads will open them to if they're, if they're good at 18 they'll be even better at 21 you know <laughs>